Welcome back. Last week we talked about selecting deer hair, how to pick good deer hair. This week we're going to show you how to use good deer hair to do collars and how to spin. It's not really a week later if you haven't figured it out. It's only 20 minutes later if you're supposed to believe it is. But I did change my glasses so you would think it was next week. So I have a fly here almost. Really I don't. Just a little tiny piece of one. But I'm going to show you how to, as you remember from last week, we've got a really good piece of hair. But I'm going to show you how to set up a collar properly. So just, just if you can use your imagination, pretend the tips of, this, of these scissors is the hair. What you do with the collar or any type of hair work is that you put a couple turns of thread around that hair and you pull on your thread and shoop, it goes up into a V. So, when you're doing a collar, and I would say this is the most frequently done wrong thing when people are working with hair. What they do is they, they do that and they tighten their thread down. The hair's going this way and this hair's that way. And then like, oh man, that thing looks really good. And then what they want it to do is they want this hair that's going to the front of the hook, they push it back and want to make it part of the head. And what happens, just like with a cowlick, it always goes back where it wants to. And so then you trim your head and what you see is this air gap between the collar and there and you can't ever figure out why it's there. It's because you tried to use the collar as part of the head. So I'm going to show you how to set a collar properly. And by the way, it's also exactly how you do an elk hair caddis properly. You never trim an elk hair caddis if you've done it right. And you'll see when I'm doing an elk hair caddis, I'm going to do that one too that I just pull on it and I get this beautiful little head. It's like a starburst head. Instead of having different size hair in there, it's all one length and it really floats the fly. So back to the collar. First thing foremost, you got really good hair. And then you come in here <clears throat> and I'm gonna cut a piece of hair. People like to talk about pencils. I was never good with pencils, so. But this is about a pencil size hair. Put it in your, in your cleaner. By the way, if you're using I don't like bone combs. They're, they're very, everybody talks about gom, bone combs and they, they don't have static. I like static in the hair, in the comb. I want it to stay there. This piece of comb right here has got to be 10 years old. If I'm working with bone combs, I'm lucky to get three weeks out of one before I broke all the teeth off of it. These nylon combs, yeah, they get a little bit of static. Well, I'm cleaning the hair so the static's there. I like that. It stays there. So, I've cleaned the butts out. You always clean the hair by holding the tips. Take your stacker. That's another thing. These have been really hard to come by. Uh, Renzetti just came out with these stackers that are big enough that actually work. We had them for a while and then they quit making them. Everybody kind of dumped them. And then Renzetti finally came out with a good one. And I'll show you something very quickly. This is the dryer sheet. If you get static, now I don't want static in, my, in this because it'll... When I come out of the stacker, I want it to fall out. So if you take a, just take a dryer sheet, run it in your, run it in the uh, stacker, and you're done with it, and you'll stop getting static in there, and it, it'll all go down to the bottom. So, take your hair, stack it. For those of you who are married, if you do that on your significant other's dining room table, they really love it, because it means you're going to buy them a new table, because it wrecks it. Don't do it on something. So. Here you go. What the stacker does is it gets, see how that came out of that? Very clean, no static, wasn't stuck in there. Now it's all one length. So this is what I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> People put their collar on and they want the collar, they want to use this hair, the front part of the hair, the butts, as part of the head. And you cannot do it. And you can't do it on an elk hair either. But you can, but you're wasting time. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it, generally on my collars I like them to be about a third of the length of the overall hook. But I don't care about that. I'm just showing you how to put this in here. See, I've got that nice clean line. It's nice and broken. There you can see the, the guard hairs. So, okay. Now, when I stack this, I'm going to have, I'm going to use just the tips of the hair for the collar. So, to stop the inclination to use this as part of the head, we're going to cut it off right now, just like you would if you're doing a small elk hair. So, I cut that nice and straight, right? And I put on my glasses, and you spin your, spin your thread. You see people spinning their threads back and forth. You spin your thread clockwise like that, and that way when you come up, you'll see the hair goes to my hand. 
If you spin it the other direction, it'll go away from the... I want it to go onto my fingers, all right? So, we've got this hair. You don't let go. See how I've got it pinched right in the front? I go right here, and I do one. I'm starting to pull down, and about the time I stop seeing the thread, I'm pulling tight. I do my second one, two. Now, if you're doing it, you don't let go. I've got to hold the, the hook shank pretty hard. And if you want it to go halfway around, just push down just a little bit. All right, third one right there. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see a nice spray of hair. It's got, whoops, wrong direction. You'll look on the bottom, and you'll see that there's none on the bottom. I went halfway around. But the key is I've got this beautiful spray of hair all the way around. So I've got a beautiful collar right now. And I don't have anything in front because I, if I try to use this hair up here, it would be sticking out in the front and I'd go like that and it would always go backwards, right? Makes sense? Okay. So, there. Now, if you look at this head, just like when you do an elk hair caddis, I'll show you how to do an elk hair too. And, and we're just going to break away and show you real quickly on that. So what you see though is every one of these hairs is the same length. So obviously, I don't have to mess around, I've, I've skipped a step, but every hair is the same length. I don't have a short one on top, you don't see the thread. I've got a beautiful, beautiful elk hair caddis head right there. So, now, if this was, your, you're tying it for a, for a muddler head type style. So I've, I've got it nice and tight, go right through it, come forward. Now we're going to do a spin. So, when you spin, this is again one of the most... This confuses people, and it shouldn't. You always have to clean the hair. Last week, if you remember, I cleaned that one piece of hair, and I had that giant amount of stuff. This is the second piece I've cleaned, and I have hardly any. That's the difference. Because when I put this hair on here, what I'm asking the hair to do, I'm going to put the hair on the hook, and I'm going to put two and a half turns of thread around it. I'm going to tighten it. It's going to spin. And as it's tightening down around the hook, I'm going to end up with one turn of thread. That one turn of thread means it's totally locked around that hook. You don't have to stack it. I just put it in there to, so I can shoot my mouth off. So, <clears throat> take the hair. All right, we're going to go right in front of this piece here. And this is just an easy, we're going to just spin it. So, just like with a collar, you don't let go of it. All right, I'm pulling down. You can see I'm letting it work around the hook. Pull the second one down around like that and every time I'm trying to get the thread to disappear. Don't do it all at once, let it work around the hook. So it's going down, there's my half turn, all right? The half turn just sits there. Now if you look at this hair on top right here, you're not going to be able to see it very well because it's all the same color hair, but when I pull it, I'm going to try to get one revolution of hair, right? So I pull, there's that one right there. I'm pulling right now, it's right here, all right? It just locked. That's one complete revolution. All right. If I, I don't, if I pull, you can see my hook's bending. I've got one turn of thread around that hook. It's not a guessing game. You put two and a half, you pull straight down, and if you see it go around one time, you're done. So then you just go, if you're going to do multiple wraps, you do the same thing. Just keep moving forward, just like that. So that's how you spin. That's how you spin a hair. And it's also how you set a collar. So and as you'll see, we did the same thing with the L-Care Caddis. Hope that helps you out. Thanks.